Not up to, I'm ready. All right, here we go. You hear me now? Yes. Okay. All right, Joe Beningo with you here on the O oh, The Pain podcast for uh, Monday, March 14th, 2022. And the Joe Beningo O oh, The Pain podcast is brought to you by the Hackensack Brewing Company, by Anita Tires, and by my good buddy Kenny Zor and KZ Marketing. And courtesy of KZ Marketing, we have the former great wide receiver for the New York Jets. My good buddy, I got the jersey on, Wes. Here it is, number 85, uh, Wesley Walker. He's in Arizona. Wesley, how you doing, bro? Hey, I miss you, you know, and uh, you don't know this, but, you know, I've had over the years listened to you for a long time when I could catch it, and my life has always been busy, and every chance I get, you know, when I, I listen to your show and the different uh, different commentaries with different people, and, you know, I've always admired you and just your background coming up over the years. And I hadn't spoken to you in a long time. And we were speaking earlier. And I think I remember, do you remember uh, um, doing a radio show out of, it was in New Jersey. I think Tiki Barber was there. Yeah. I, I, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. You, you're talking about and I, that was the yep. last time I saw you, you know. Wow. We did but, Monday. We had a Monday night football show that I used to do with Tiki Barber. I did it with right. Amani Toomer as well. Right. So. Right. Yeah. But I just I just think about the times just watching a lot of the commentaries on WFAN, just all the people who've come up. And you're definitely one of the mainstays and guys that I've known. And I've just been fortunate. I've been able to keep up a good relationship, even though we don't talk. You know, it's just always a pleasure. And like we talked for an hour the other day and it's like, you know, you haven't missed a beat. And I'm just so happy for you. And uh, I don't know what happened, you know, with your retirement because you've been doing this for a long time. And I figure you're ready to hang up the shoes, but obviously not. But it's just always a pleasure to be able to uh, be able to sit down and talk with you. So I appreciate you. Well, you know, I appreciate you, bro. You, you're one of the all-time greats for this team. You know, I've been a Jet fan, you know this, since 1965. Yep. Yeah. I've got the scars on my body yeah. to prove it. But you know what? You played uh, on some of the best teams that, you know, the Jets ever had here. You know, 1981, 1982, 1985, 1986. You played on all of those teams. You played for Walt Michaels. You played for Joe Walton. Uh, you know, it just just give me a – let's start with this. You played for those two guys. Give me what, – what's your feeling when as you compare, you know, Walt Michaels to, to Walton as a head coach? How about that? Well, I'll tell you what. They're definitely two different people. Uh, and I got to know Walt Michaels probably better after he retired. And uh, Walt Michael could be kind of gruff, quiet. And you never really, you know, he was a defensive guy, but you never had this perception that he was like real knowledgeable, you know, because he just ran the show and he was kind of gruff and it was very intimidating. But right. I got a chance with him, uh, you know, after he retired and, you know, talking football and you realize how smart he really was. And then I was telling him, I never understood why coaches couldn't sit down and have a relationship with the players. And sometimes coaches feel like they can't really get closer as a friend. And I don't really believe that. You you want to be able to go through a wall for a coach and not knowing him. And it wasn't until after, you know, he got released where, you know, and I'm wondering why we come so close to the Super Bowl and then they released him. And there's a lot of politics that come into play. Right, but right. I didn't really get to know him until he after retired. And you wish you had that relationship when you're a player. Joe Walton, for instance, was a guy who I respected. He didn't know his players. And, and one of the things I, I told him, he should really try to get to know his players instead of stereotyping or worrying about what somebody had a perception of instead of getting to know players themselves. And I really had a lot of respect for him when he came in as a coordinator. But as a head coach, he tried to control everything, you know, and he, he you know, and as a head coach, you're under pressure. You got to run the management of the whole office, the whole. Right, right, the right. Very tough to do. And he got away from what he did as a coordinator. And even though he had guys like Richie Cotite as their coordinator, Joe Walton did everything. He tried to control everything. And I really felt as a coordinator, he was the guy and he probably would have had more success if he could have kept that same attitude as being a head coach. And a lot of relationships he ruined uh, a lot of guys. And, he, and I think a Greg Buttle has no respect for uh, Joe Walton. And it right, got to right. the point in the end of my career and he may have felt certain things we didn't really talk. And 
he just wasn't the person that I thought, and I lost a lot of respect for him. So the relationship wasn't there. And I think, uh, and, and I tell this to people all the time, I wish we were all together, you know, and it started from ownership, the players together being, and we had talked about being a family. We weren't really a family, you know, we had guys that were very separate. And I think coaches are, and, 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 and I look at Joe Walton and, and, and Walt Michaels, their responsibility is to try to bring these guys together as a family and really to try to create an atmosphere where you want to play together and do things together. And that's to me is a responsibility of a coach. And we didn't really have that. You know, we had some pretty good players and we, you know, the X's and the O's were there and you have certain pieces, but just having that real team thing, what you need to do to really get to a, a Super Bowl. And as a youngster, you don't realize these things being younger and you only realize it maybe, you know, towards the end of your career or when you're retired, when you see things that are happening. And I had a chance to really examine uh, what is going on with my future and, and what happened in the past. And you just wish things were a little bit different that you could have changed. But the, it, when you talk about these two coaches, they were good in their own respects, but there were times where they changed and there were some things that I thought they could have done to make it better and really bring the team closer to really be able to, to gel, to really perform. And, and they weren't able to do that. And that's, that was my big difference. We're talking to the great Wesley Walker, of course, number 85 of the New York Jets, uh, one of the great careers. I think only Don Maynard has more touchdowns as a Jet than you, right? You had 71 touchdowns? 71. Uh, and Maynard I had 88. I, I had over, I think, 8,000 yards or something. Right, right. And I was very frustrated, and, and, and we were talking earlier. You know, I looked at receivers around the league, even my teammate out too, who used to catch 900 balls and I'm catching 40 balls. I I, don't, I forget my the, the most I've ever caught 40 something balls in a season. You and never you look caught at, 50. You never even caught 50 in a season, right? No, that was very frustrating for me. And wow. I was I was always um, they put these uh, stereotypes on you too, and always being the deep threat. But I always thought I could, you know, because I prided myself in running patterns and not only just being a speed guy, but I wanted to be um, just. Um, just an all around athlete, even if I had to block or whatever it is, I would do anything, you know, and I just wish my talents could have came out even more so than what I've been able to do in my career. And I look back on it and I look at some of the guys that I've even played with that are in the hall of fame. And, and some of my numbers are just as good or better, but it could have been a lot better. And a lot of my problem was really staying healthy, uh, especially towards the latter part of my career. And uh, when you get to the Hall of Fame, it's you know, it's all about longevity and health and putting up the numbers. And I, I think about if I'd probably stayed healthy in some of those times, I probably would have doubled my numbers. But I just remember uh, my um, year in 1986, I had 12 touchdowns. Don yep. Mater had 14. I'm saying, I got five games to go. I'm going to bust this record. And we, we took this losing skid. Oh, I, yeah touchdown and it's in the end zone and I get, we're playing the Rams I forgot the name of the defensive back that hit me knocked right. the crap and it was a short touchdown but popped the ball out and I fumbled and we just went downhill never caught any more touchdowns after that and the record at that time was 18 and I thought I'm going to get this record you know you always prided yourself and right. trying to be the best and you have these opportunities and as a you know, a youngster, you don't realize the opportunities are not going to be there. And you don't know this until after you retire or some of the things that have happened. You just don't get that many opportunities. And I think of guys like Cam Newton, who I think they lost one game. He goes to the Super Bowl. He ends up losing. He's not been the same since. Dan nope, Marino nope. has been to a Super Bowl. He put up all these Hall of Fame numbers, but it hasn't quite got there. I have a hard time looking at the Super Bowl the celebrations because it's something that we came close to but never attained and that's something that's everybody's dream and you know I love watching football but sometimes I have to turn it off because it's something that I wasn't able to attain and uh, you know I remember going to the Hall of Fame and I look at some of the guys I played with like James Lofton and and and, and, and Steve Largent and yeah yep. Largent was my backup one in Pro Bowls I, I was a 
Uh, even Chris Collinsworth, he was my backups during the time. But you want to be at that level every year. And that was very, my frustrating times. And, you know, there was nothing better. I remember in 78 when I was the MVP and you're going to the Pro Bowl, but you wish it was like this every year. And, and when people ask me, do I miss football? I never miss losing. The Jets are, can be very frustrated, even just watching them now. And I remember those times. And I never liked being hurt. And, and losing and being hurt, you know, doesn't make me miss it. And if we won a bunch of Super Bowls every year, like Pittsburgh during the time and some of the teams that have had success, I would say, yes, I miss the, 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 uh, the game itself. But, you know, I, I think about Tom Brady, how many he's gone to, and that's a feat in itself. You, these are the kind of teams and times that you wish you had as an athlete. And, and I admire that success. And I just wish I had that. And that's a frustrating thing for me that I never attained the goals that I was hoping to. But I'm still blessed to be able to say that I played 13 years for the New York Jets and had somewhat of success, but not the success that uh, I would really – really wish I had had because I was very frustrated receiver not catching the balls uh, that you looked over time that Jerry Rice and some of the guys over the years and right catch yep. yep. that's what gets you to the top and I never quite got there because then that's about opportunity and I never got the opportunity no I want to I want to and again we're talking to the great Wesley Walker Joe Beningo with the uh, Ode of Pain podcast and again we want to thank Wesley who's in Arizona for coming on with us you know, you mentioned 1986. Let's talk about that for a second because you guys start out the season 10 and 1. You won nine games in a row. You're killing everybody. I mean, you know, Kenny O'Brien's having this unbelievable season. You and 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 Al and Freeman and he, he just you just lighten it up. And then guys start to get hurt. The defense started to get hurt. I think the whole defensive line went down. Joe went yep. down, Flecko, Marty Lyons goes down, Gastineau goes down. You yep. 10 and 1. You, and I, ask me, tell me if you remember this game. You go into Miami on a Monday night, and they absolutely destroy you guys, forty-five to three. I still got, I still got a hemorrhoid from that game. Once so you got that forty-five. Well, you remember that Monday night, and that they, really started well, those, the downfall. That was the beginning of the downfall. Of you losing the, games, the last five games. Those are the games you want to forget. And I always think, God, I just remember as a rookie, we beat. Miami 33 to 20 and I had two right. touchdowns we always had success and then the most important times where you need to have the success we just bombed out and I just could never understand that and you mentioned that 45 to 3 and obviously I didn't do too much in that game and um I just don't understand um uh, you know the way we you know we put things together and then we just have these downfalls and I really, really believe that year we were going to go to the Super Bowl. That was one of the best teams we had. Yep. And we yep. were clicking on all, all sellers, offensive, defensively. And when you have a defense that's getting turnovers and setting you up with field position, it just works hand in hand. Like I said, I had 12 touchdowns to go. And I'm thinking yep. I'm going to get a record. And then when we had all these injuries, and those were key players, even Lance Mel. Yeah. Uh, Yep. We we weren't getting those turnovers and the field position and things just weren't clicking. And we stopped throwing the ball. And and I just never understood that. And then we just took a turn for the, the worst. We still got in the playoffs. And I still remember going, uh, I think it was, um, was it Cleveland game during that time? Well, first, well, you, well, first you guys, you lose five in a row. You finish 10-6 yeah. after being 10-1. and one, But you still make the playoffs. And then you have that wild card game against the Chiefs. At home, yeah. and you beat them. You beat them bad. You beat them 35-15. Yep. Pat Ryan was the quarterback in that game. Played yep. terrific. If you remember, yep. Kevin MacArthur, the linebacker, started the second half with an interception return for a touchdown, and everything is going. And, you know, and, and then you go to Cleveland, and, and it all falls apart after, after you guys have a 20-10 to 10 lead with I, four I, minutes to go I in the game, Wesley. I talked to Freeman about that. He always talks about that. And, you know, and – and this is just how it always was. And we've had some games against Cleveland and our people making these comebacks. But I remember, and, and I don't blame uh, Mark Gasson with that penalty in the end, but right. I'm like, we got this. We have this. We, we're winning. We're going to the championship. And then he, they get that penalty. And when that happened, it gave them life, and they go all the way back 
you know, I don't know, 80, 90 yards and they score and they beat us. I cried after that game. You know, it was, it was just like the worst. And I think about. Let's see, much, can I stop you for a second? You cried. I got drunk. I just want to yeah. tell you. <laughs> well, <laughs> wait, wait, wait. You cried. I, I got drunk. Got drunk. Oh and my I'm God. still sick. And Wes, I'm still <laughs> sick did. from that game. Oh man. I hate you. You, you, I can remember Joe and we weren't even very good. My rookie year, we get beat by new Orleans. They haven't won a game and we get beat. I cried yep. after that game. I yep. got pretty drunk there too. I, I'll tell you, but it's just, just so, you know, just so devastating when you know you have the ability and you have the team, or the right, athlete, right. just the time you put in and how we could never put it together to finish properly. And that was always baffling to me. And then when you watch the Jets now, every year you get excited, something always happens. And I, I just don't understand it. And it's very frustrating. But I appreciate you. You know, you're wearing my jersey. You're always there. I listen to your commentary. And you rip them whenever you get a chance. And you don't hold anything back. But you're there to support the Jets because you're a real true Jet fan. And these are the people that I really respect and, and why I played this game. And when I got inducted to the ring of honor uh, yep, and what yep. oh, caption is this, I played this game because of the fans and, and guys like yourself, this is why we play this game. This is why we enjoy it. And it's always a pleasure win or lose the support that you really get. And I, I, I'll never forget that. And that's why I will still bleed green and support the jets. Even though I'm in Arizona now, there's no team I'll be rooting for. Talking again to the great Wesley Walker, Joe Beningo with you here on the Ode of Pain podcast. All right, the two quarterbacks. This is the two quarterbacks, Richard Todd, Kenny O'Brien. You went to the playoffs with both of them. You went to the championship game, obviously, in 82 with Richard. I, I had a lot of issues with Richard Todd, uh, you know, and, and Kenny, too. Who, you got to talk to Who was the better quarterback? Who was better, Wes? Richard? See, I don't like – I you know, it, it, a lot of people – try to define who's the best player in every position. You know, everybody brings something to the table. And, and I don't think I give uh, Richard Todd enough credit because I caught a lot of bombs from him. And, you know, I get his problems trying to fill in Joe's footsteps and not having his own personality. And a lot of times you don't have the coaching to really bring out the true talents. If you have, and they were two different type of players, strong arms, and I probably had more personal relationship with uh, Kenny because he was in the latter part of my career, but I had a great deal of respect for both of them. And I always felt bad for Kenny O'Brien because I watched him in a superstars event going against John Elway, Dan Marino, and he beat them both. And he had this talent, but I had success. And, and I don't care what anybody says. So, and with me, just, hey, I am kind of took that line from Keyshawn John. Just throw me the damn ball. Yep, I remember yep. Pat Ryan filling in, and, and I did well when he came in. Just throw me the ball. Everybody brings something. I can't say who was really better. They just had different, unique talents, and I had a respect for them both. And uh, there were times, uh, I remember in 82, I had three touchdowns in uh, – on Monday Night Football with Richard Todd. And obviously that was in, in Detroit. That was in Detroit against, against the Lions. Yep. Right? And matter of fact, I, I remember Bobby Jackson, man, they cut a, one of the defensive backs that, that the, the week after that, he said, man, you're getting people cut. But it's a team game. And Kenny O'Brien, I, I still will never forget that 86 Miami game. Uh, you know, oh, yeah. 51 Todd, Yeah. I've seen Richard Todd throw for over 400 yards. Yep. A long yep. time. Ryan. So when you compare your numbers and stats, it's just a different environment. And I always used to compare it like this. Uh, we could have gotten Dan Marino. Would Dan Marino had the same success if he came to the Jets? Yes. I don't know if that would have been the case. Well, see, you, here's my, let me say this. Okay, I'm going to tell you this. Yeah. I think that if you guys would have – because that was one of the biggest mistakes. And, not, and all due respect to Kenny O'Brien. <laughs> One of the biggest mistakes the Jets ever made is set him back 10 years with not drafting Marino. And I know Marino only went to the one Super Bowl, didn't win. Well, they that. weren't the team. But, There's a lot of teams that passed on him. But let me say that. I, I get that. But they but the teams that passed on him also, also drafted John Elway, Jim Kelly. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, yeah. but, 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 but let's go back to that. If Marino would have been the quarterback, I think you guys, those teams would have at least went to a Super Bowl, probably a couple. 
I don't know if you would have beat the because the NFC teams, you know, you had the great 49er teams, you had the Giants that were terrific, you know, Washington, the 85 Bears. There was a lot of terrific NFC teams there. But I think if you guys had Marino, you would have at least went to the Super Bowl. Well, that's all speculation. And you would have caught more passes. And I'm telling you, you know what? Well, maybe that's a possibility. But you were better than Mark Duper. You were better than Mark Clayton. I I have a lot of respect for those guys too. Yeah, me too. But you were better. But I, but I think though too, you have to have the coaching staff that really brings those numbers right. Right. And uh, whether they could have really done that. And I, I really love my my first coordinator when I got to the Jets, John Isaac. And I, I we were talking yesterday about um, how, you know, I could make a suggestion. I and I remember speaking to my coach, Dad Henny. Hey, I can read this. I can do this. They can't tell whatever defense they are in. I can do this. that, And, and I will never forget. John Isaac tried it out in practice. Next thing I know, it was on the game plan. And those are the type of coaches, right. you know, and I'm hoping they could have harnessed Dan Marino to try to, you know, get us to a Super Bowl. And that's all speculation. But the point I'm making, if I don't care how good you are, you know, it's so hard to get to the Super Bowl. But you have to have, you have to know your players. You have to design and offense and schemes and really knowing your players and try to come up with a package that, you know, it's going to help the player not only make him better, but trying to fit in not only your scheme, but what that dot guy does really well. And so the point I'm making, whether, you know, Dan Marino could have fit into our scheme, because I felt like towards the end of both Richard Todd's career and with Joe Walton and Kenny O'Brien, they got stymied in the offense and they got to a point where they didn't do no more and less than what they were supposed to do. And there was times where I could see a blitz and, hey, I'm one-on-one. You should audible and we got a deep pass and that's six points. And sometimes that would not happen. But sometimes coaches put so much pressure on you. You don't do what you're supposed to do as an athlete. We didn't have the flexibility. To, let's say, and I'm sure Dan Marino, if he saw something, oh, he absolutely. could right. the coaches right. go do it we didn't have that flexibility and there was only one time in my career where we had coaches like that where it listened to their players and we had to beg Joe Walton sometimes just to call a play or whatever wow but you know and and that's why I say with coaches you you have to have a respect for each other and this camaraderie and something real intense where you're working together and I'm not so sure coaches are able to do that with their players. And, you know, sometimes coaches have these egos and, you know, there's nothing wrong with trying to learn from each other. And, and I just don't understand. And I don't know what it would take to be a head coach. And especially now in these days with free agency and the different personalities of different organizations, how you think and what you are trying to do, but the ultimate thing to get to the Super Bowl, I just know it's very difficult. And that's why I admired Tom Brady who's, gone there so many different times and won a few and that's a feat in itself and it's just not easy to do and I, I admire that and that's something that I wish I would just be in there one time and I'm sure you're waiting for one more at least that before we die you know yeah oh yeah if it happen I don't know but it's very difficult that's all I know and it's 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 um, something that every player dreams about wants it and there's a lot of players that never got that opportunity. And it's very frustrating. And I don't even know what it's going to take to get this team over the top to get to that ultimate game uh, to be able to win the Super Bowl. Are, are you, again, we're talking to the great Wesley Walker. Are you following the Jets these days? I mean, you know, you, you got anything to say about Robert Sala, Zach Wilson? Do you have you anything know, to say about no, these guys? I, I, I do try to follow as much as I can. And, and you know, I left New, New York in the middle of the season and, and I, I went to a couple of games and, you know, I'm a Jet fan through and through and I like Robert Sala. And then I listened to some of the commentary and I don't like when the coaches snipe each other. And I remember Rex Ryan made a comment and, you know, you can take Rex Ryan, some things he did down in Buffalo when he left and not having the success. And he had some success with the Jets and the Jets can be a very frustrating team trying to uh, keep it positive and to have success. And, um, but I, I think Robert is a, 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 a player's guy. 
Um, one of the, the uh, things this year, I mean, Zach Wilson, who was a young guy, how do you expect a young guy with a young coach, the coordinator that they had gets in an accident and, you know, um, right. Greg Knapp, right. I mean, in that situation, then they have a new coordinator coming in, not having the experience also. And, and then you have different players who haven't had the, uh, the experience also. So you, you're expecting like everybody, almost every position not having experience and you want to get to the Super Bowl, they don't know how to get there, what to really expect. And they're just going through this for the first time. So you also have to give it some time, but you have a young quarterback. I'm not so sure uh, Zach is going to work out. We all thought Darnold was going to be the guy. And you see certain things that go over a time that doesn't happen. And I'm not so sure uh, Zach Wilson is that guy, but he definitely has that ability. But you have to have that coaching staff is going to bring that out. Uh, injuries are a big part of the game. That's always a big thing with the Jets. And uh, they've had uh, the problems. And I'm looking at this guy, Becton, who's a humongous. Right, he right. Has, he's, he's always still. hurt. He's always yeah. hurt, Wes. But I've been there, too. So I know what that is like. But – not only him, but just there are certain key players in the past have even gotten hurt. And it's a long season now. And that's one thing I don't understand because when you go to training camp, it, training camps are not the same as they used to be. It was like no. the country almost. And you yep. still have big problem with injuries during the year. So they have to address that. The Jets are still trying to find themselves. And I'm sure Robert Sal is trying to figure out how he's going to do this year based on what has happened previously. But I still will give it some positivity and some time. Uh, but in the NFL, you really don't have that much time. Every year is just different. And at some point, uh, they're going to have to make some decisions and make some changes again if they don't have success. So uh, hopefully they can keep guys healthy. And, and I, I like Zach Wilson. I like Robert Sala. But, hey, it's just hard putting everything together. And I just know it's not that easy. But if you have the coaches on both sides of the ball, and you have the players, and, and you can kind of keep them out, and they want to follow your program if they want to buy into it. It's just, you know, I look at Rex Ryan when he went down to Buffalo. He lost that whole locker room. If right, you lose, right. then that could happen to Robert Sala if that begins to happen with losing. But they can turn it around. I just don't know what it's going to take. But it's going to start with that quarterback and having protection for him. And if they don't get that, I just don't see it happening. So I'm going to get to the great Wesley Walker. You know, Wes, I want to just uh, give my sponsors a little uh, love here, and then we'll come back. I got a, a few more things. I really appreciate the time. Uh, Joe Beningo, the Yoda Payne Podcast, with one of my my all-time guys, number 85, uh, the great Wesley Walker. And, of course, the Yoda Payne Podcast brought to you by uh, Hackensack Brewing Company. And you know the deal with the Hackensack Brewing Company, uh, located 10 minutes off the George Washington Bridge. I have to get you there if you're ever back in the area, Wes. Yeah, well, 10 minutes off the George Washington Bridge, <laughs> uh, 30 seconds off Route 4 in Hackensack, and uh, you can check it out. The tap room's open from 4.30 to 10 p.m. As I read this here, Wes, Monday through Friday, 2 to 10 Saturday, 12 to 8 on Sundays, uh, 78 Johnson Avenue in Hackensack, New Jersey, right behind the tombstones. Check out my buddy Mike Jones. We've done a couple live podcasts there in the, in the past. We're going to do a couple more as well. Check out Mike Jones. Check out TJ uh, check out uh, check out my uh, son-in-law Andre, and they'll take care of you. Again, 78 Johnson Avenue in Hackensack, New Jersey. Okay, we're talking to the great Wesley Walker, number 85, one of the great Jets of all time. I I, I got a, a couple things, and I want to get to uh, your signature game, that game against Miami. I think that's the one you would probably agree about. Can I ask you this though? When you played your entire career, Pat Leahy was the kicker. Pat yes. Leahy, Wes, missed more than <laughs> big kicks. This guy, the big kicks that this guy missed, it's how did he last 20 years? Tell me, how did but, this guy but last I think, 20 years? I think he still might be the leading scorer for the Jets. I well, he probably at, is. You know, but he, you know, you know, we're all human. We're not perfect, but he still was my guy. And I have nothing but respect for him. And I always love Pat Leahy. And matter of fact, it's funny you mentioned him because uh, it was um, maybe two years ago. And we had a like a Legends weekend and I was sitting right. with him. Right. And he 
saying to me, who's the receiver? Do they have any receiver? And I was telling them, they have this guy, Robbie Anderson, and I wish they would use this guy. They don't right. throw to him. They say right. he can run deep ball. Right, right, and right. The intricate parts of the offense. But I'm like, if he can run deep, then throw it to him. How come you don't? And I remember I went to go down to do an interview and Robbie Anders goes for 90 yards. And I came up to Pat Leahy to tell him, you know, see what I'm talking about. But Pat Leahy was one of the most admired guys on our team. And uh, his wife was wonderful. And, and when I see him, he's just, just, just one of my guys. And I know you don't mind ripping people when they need to be ripped. And we all do things where, hey, I, I drop balls in a big game against Buffalo. Right. Uh, you you dropped a couple. I, I'm not bringing those up, Wes. I'm going to let no, you guys. No, <laughs> you drop a couple. I'm not, I know I'm not perfect, but you got to count the things that he did well. And right. and I think he might still be the, the all-time leading scorer on our team. So he obviously made more than he missed. But it just happened to be some of the important times when you need it. That's what happened. It's a pressure game. It's just not that easy. I remember with, uh, going to the stadium with my daughter and they're practicing these field goals, you know, and she's trying and she made this little 20 yarder and uh, just a little PAT. And now they move the those yeah. goal yeah. posts. Like 35 yards now. Yeah, That is not easy. I don't even know how they do it. And it's very difficult. You think that's something that you know, in, on a pro level, it's a chip shot and we're supposed to, this is what we get paid to do. But it is not easy. And that's the intricacy of, uh, of a football game. And they always say games are won by inches. Just a little thing. If, if Freeman McNeil or Johnny Hector misses a, a blitz on a play that I'm wide open, that could be the tale yes. of scoring and not scoring. Kills and that's how hard. And there's a lot of pressure, whether you're a kicker or any position, you have to do your jobs. And that's what coaches have to really bring guys together. And I think as a youngster, you don't realize how much that 110% they say you got to give every game. You don't realize you got to give it. You got to work hard. You got to train hard. And the harder I, I work is the more success I had. And unfortunately, we didn't have the, the programs and the trainers. And Joe, my wife just started me drinking water. I'm an athlete. Wow. Ran I was a track sprinter in college. Right. Ball. Cal, ball. right. You know, I um, I was the first double sport letterman at Cal. It, that hadn't been done since World War II. Wow. I never drank water. I, I drink a little gator in the side, a little sip of water. It never quenched my say drinking soda. And I look back on my career. Maybe that's why I even got hurt with pools or whatever. It may be. Right, right, but there right, are, right. There are things that you can do with your body. And that's why I pride myself in uh, now with my health now, I should have done that way back then, but Tom Brady supposedly has all these things with nutrition and everything right. else. Avocado ice cream. Hey, but I know the harder you work, the better you will be. And I can honestly say in 86, I remember, uh, and there was times where I had my best years. Those were the times that I probably worked harder than ever, even hiring a personal trainer, doing things. But we didn't have those things that they have now. And the athletes have so much you know, even the money is better and access to more things. But I just wish I would have had this knowledge uh, for my wife just now. And I've been with her 15 years now that I'm just drinking water. It's a shame. I, I look back on my career, just things that you could have done. I wish I could do over. I don't know if I should play this game with all the surgeries that I've had, because I'd have to rethink that also, because that, you know, playing football definitely in the NFL is taking its toll on me. Yeah, I mean, look, I, look, we, we talked again talking to the great Wesley Walker. We talked about this off the air. You can't play in the NFL and not have some kind of physical problem. I mean, let's be a, any period of time that you played, you know, for anybody, they have to have some kind of physical problem later on in life. I think it's impossible, right, Wes? Well, I I, I look at uh, the fact that you know I never really thought about getting hurt until you know. I, I, I remember getting knee surgery my senior year, and I'm like, wow, I'm really going. Actually, you read this about other people. Yeah. And I really still never thought about really having major injuries or what your body was going to be like after I finished my career. And then I remember looking at, and even just maybe two years ago, we had a Legends thing or a year ago, 
I'm looking at Randy Rasmussen and Emerson Boozer, and they're struggling walking. Wow. And wow. And I remember talk, looking at Kenny Schroer, who's been battling with his own bouts with health. Right. Right. And is this going to be us in the future? And I, I look at, you know, things that I've gone through. And I was in the, uh, my room doing some sit ups the other day, crunches. And I've had a, 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 a six level back fusion. Mm -hmm. I've had 14 screws put in my neck oh, and I, residual stuff from all this nerve damage. And I cannot just get up and down normally. And I'm, I'm actually working with my son-in-law as a personal trainer with stuff and I can do certain things. But when I'm in bed at night or I'm driving for a period of time, and like I said, I was doing some crunches, I'm rolling around. I'm like, I can't get up. And I got to roll around and then I'm trying to figure out how am I going to grab all over the- uh, I'm with you, Wes. I'm the same way. I could not get up from the floor. If I'm down on the floor, I, can't, I have a hard time getting up. So I understand. Down. A lot of it is age too, yep. but you never thought it was going to be this way. Now, I, um, with my wife, we had a um, companionship aid company where we work with the elderly, you know, and you're working with people with walkers and, you know, just Parkinson and all these different ailments. And I can relate to what they're going through because I feel like that in a lot of ways. I mean, I've lost function in my right hand because of nerve damage because of my mm. neck and all this atrophy. Uh, I have all this pain and you don't want to take painkillers and medication. And I stopped doing all that stuff. And I've just tried to clear out my body. And, and plus the age factor is another thing with metabolism, how you eat. And I'm just now doing this now trying to change things. And I should have been doing this earlier in my career, but when I'm struggling to be able to walk or get up and I have this inflammation in both my knees, even my good knees acts up and, I just can't figure this out. So part of it's just, I know it's from my injuries. A lot of it's from my, uh, or, you know, getting older, but I had most of my, my major, major surgery after my career. And it's all stemmed from playing football. I've had my neck, my back, both my shoulders. So I had a reconstructor on my right shoulder, rotary cuff done. In 2014, I had my left shoulder uh, repair, uh, rotator cuff repair. I had my uh, my back surgery, my six level fusion, and then my Achilles done. And I remember wow. seeing a surgeon in the after he had operated on my back in 2014. I'm going in later on for my Achilles. He says, "Wesley, what is going on? You're not even playing anymore, you know." And um, and it's just little things like that that add up. But when I look back on even just my Achilles, I've always had problems with my Achilles. I used to wear cowboy boots with a heel lift uh, from Doctor Nicholas doing things. But certain things that happen that you don't even know you're walking around with, you could twist and jump or and also tear something. But it's all from playing uh, from my career and everything that stemmed from it. And that's the scary part. So right now I'm concentrating on really changing my diets, eating properly, exercising. My wife loves to hike and big hiking in Arizona here. And so I'm trying to do that. I can't keep up with her. She'll go out and run three, four or five miles like nothing. I'm right, walking. Right. Right. I used to right. you know, I used to run like a deer. I prided myself. I used, to, I used to have competition with Dave Jennings and our, our, we used to have to run this 12 minute run when we come into training camp and I'd either be second or third at least. And now I can't even jog. I have to walk and my knees are bad. And so I'm trying to uh, establish some doctors out here in Arizona. I'm hoping to uh, find some and I'm hoping they'll have an alternative program or something that will make this better. I'm not so sure they can, but something that's gonna be more positive for my body, I'm not too sure that it's gonna make it. And that's why I rethink a long time ago, uh, the, uh, the reporter had approached me and when I was going through my back surgery, and things were really, really bad. There was times I'd get out of my bed where I would just take two, two pain kitters with a soda in the morning, get back in the bed. I didn't wanna get out of bed. Mm. And I told uh, uh, a reporter at one point in time, if I had to do it over again, I would never do this again. I'm getting better, but it's not to where I thought I would be. And then when I look at former players and guys I've seen over the years, and, and especially with the CTE and all the things that are happening with ALS and Parkinson's and whatnot, and they're relating this to head trauma. And there are people that don't play this game when you get older, that could happen too. But 
you know, I just want to concentrate on trying to be healthy. And I'm looking at some of my teammates who are really struggling. There's a lot of players out there uh, in my teammates that are having some health issues and oh, people, whether it's related to football or not, or just the aging process, but it's not fun. And that's something that I never wanted to go through or look at. But when I see former teammates of mine, I'm like, man, is that going to be me in a couple of years, you know, and I'm going to be 67 in May. And I can't believe how we talking about, times when I was a rookie in 77 coming in now yeah. out of the game for so long where did the time go you know it's unbelievable we're talking to the great Wesley Walker I really appreciate the time we got a few more minutes Wes I got to bring in one of my one more of my sponsors here you know how that works you know? hey you got some bills you got you got to you got to make some, you got to give some love here to the sponsors yeah. and Anita Tire and I've talked about it for a long time Rivervale New Jersey Westwood Avenue go check them out uh, you need your, uh, you need tires. You need your car service. Go see my son Johnny works there. He's the sales manager. Go see Ari. He owns the place. You mentioned my name. They'll take care of you. Anything with tires. Anything with your car service. I need a tire in uh, Rivervale, New Jersey, Westwood Avenue. Go check them out. Tell them Beningo sent you. We're talking to the great number eighty-five, Wesley Walker, one of the great Jets of all time. One of my guys. I got the jersey on here. I got a bunch, you a bunch of the jersey. I only get the jerseys from the guys from the past now, Wes, because <laughs> there's really nobody on the team I want now. I mean, hopefully there will be, but right now there isn't. So I well, only you know, my it, guys from the past. It, it's very funny though, and you know, I look at it, you know, with this whole free agency thing, and then especially after I retired, more right. so. I'm, now you got two teams at different stadiums, different names, and. You know, I, it's hard. I went to your SoFi Stadium. You got San Diego there, the L.A. Chargers. Yep, and, yep, yep. and, you know, players go to different teams. Who do you really root for? There's not that, well, you know, those guys that you, that stuck with the same team and you don't have that. So it's just so different now. But I imagine if a if Zach Wilson comes out. Oh, yeah, absolutely. In the right. Super Bowl, you have that jersey, you know. Well, I'm but very. Yeah. let me tell you something. I'm very tough on the quarterbacks. I yeah. only have three quarterback jerseys. I got Joe Namath, obviously, yeah. Vinny Testaverde, and yeah. Chad Pennington. Now, those are the only qu- – I don't have Kenny O'Brien. I don't have Richard. You yeah. know, I'm very – I'm a very tough grader when it comes to the quarterbacks. <laughs> yeah. I got to tell you that. Yeah. I saw Chad Pennington at the Super Bowl, too. I just saw him. Oh, Vinny, did you? Yeah. No, no, Chad Pennington. I just saw oh, him. Oh, Chad. Yeah, Chad yeah. was a good – if Chad would have st- – when Chad was healthy, the yeah. Jets won. When he got hurt – they weren't any good. I, I uh, but I want to ask you this. I want uh, you mentioned the stadiums and SoFi. You know, we talked about it. The Jets have never had their own stadium. I mean, Next. even when Shea Stadium, that, that was Absolutely. really the Mets Stadium, and then you guys go to Giant Stadium. I mean, you so the Jets have, and even now with Matt Life, you still to me, it's still the Giant Stadium. How, how no, about that, Wes? No, I hated it. We weren't allowed. I'll, I'll never forget when we moved over to the Metal Lines in '86, and Joe Walton got up. We can't complain. We are not allowed to say right, anything. Right. We had to be tight-lipped. Everybody hated it. We hated driving over. There. Hey, it's still tough driving over there for me. And and now my kids oh, are Jersey. Please, right. I lived on Long Island for a long time. I hated driving over there. Sure. It's still, sure. I actually had one of my uh, couple of games flew me in a helicopter. And to get back home, it was still a long day. Well, you know what's funny? I just want to stop you for a second. It's funny you say that because right now I live in Jersey. The only way I'm going, because I've been invited to go play golf in all Long Island. Yeah. The only way I'm going to Long Island is if somebody got me a helicopter to take <laughs> me out there. I can tell it you is, that way. It is tough. And like you said, at Shea Stadium, we still shared it with the Mets. And that's and the road. Was one of my guys, I had a lot of good friends there. But I never felt we had our own identity. And imagine moving to the Meadowlands, yep, and yep. you still got to walk in and see Giant Stadium. Yep, How could yep. they couldn't put Jets on there also? And, and it was just not right to me. I never could figure it out. And I did get excited when we were thinking about um, building our own stadium. I'm not so sure, sure if I would have wanted it in New York City, but I was right, hoping they right. would want it in Long Island somewhere, too. But I just wish we had our own identity, our own stadium, and that we could share that it was really ours. Because when we walk in that stadium, it wasn't really Jet Stadium. I, I no. walked in the stadium at the beginning of the year. It's a half baseball stadium. We're playing on a baseball field yep. and a football field. It just does not make sense. And, and, you know, I can talk about it now, but we weren't even supposed to say anything. And I think uh, I remember doing an interview after I retired about 
how the guys weren't allowed to say anything. And I just remember Joe Walton being tight lipped and almost threatening us or whatever. And you just wanted to say some vile things right back at them. And why can't you, why did we have to be censored and not be able to tell the truth? But guys didn't like that, Joe. We didn't like that. We wanted our own state and we wish you could. And, you know, when you think about the owners who have all this money, supposedly, it seems to me that teams, even now, they could hire the proper coaches, buy the proper stadium. You know, even if it's two teams you have to share it with to do something in a, uh, in a good way that's going to be positive for the organization. And for the life of me, why do some, you know, teams get it and some people don't? And then when I look at the whole overall picture of all the NFL teams, there's not a lot of consistency of different teams going to the Super Bowl or being positive. There's a lot of bad teams out there that are still struggling or gone downhill and changing. So there's no exact science to how to get there. And it's not easy. So I also have to say that as an owner, as a coach, it is very difficult to put everything together. I don't know. Uh, I don't have a crystal ball to see what would get those teams over the top because not everybody does it on a consistent basis. Well, a lot of it is to do with ownership. There's no doubt. But I, I, but I, I don't want to get into that. I want, we only got a couple of minutes left. I mean, I really appreciate you giving me the time. But I got to talk about what has to be your signature game, right? The 51-45 win over Miami in 86. You caught four touchdown passes. You catch the touchdown pass on the last play in regulation to tie the game and then the win in the overtime to win it. How about that game? Give me a little feel. I mean, that was an unbelievable game. I uh, Kenny threw for about 400 yards. I think Marino threw for 500 yards in that game. And he, Marino threw six touchdown passes in that game. Crazy. Yeah. Matt, how about that game? A friend of mine just recently, he he came out. Uh, he's in he's in uh, Rockland County, but he, he came out here for a bar mitzvah, and he said he ran into uh, uh, Dan Marino at a uh, autograph signing, and he was telling him how, how good friends with me and that touchdown, right, right. four touchdowns, and Dan Marino said, hey, I had six touchdowns that I threw, yep. you know, but it wasn't a game that I thought out in the, in the world that was going to happen. I was actually, I, I had took off a couple of days of practice because I had a strain growing. And I remember going into that game. I was so pissed at Joe Walton. They weren't even using me. Right, and right. we had a great offense, things that we could do. And they finally call this one play, this play, play action that I'm waiting for, you know, and it was towards the end of the second quarter, and it's wide open, catch a touchdown. Uh, we come back to the sidelines, we get the ball back, and it's not that much time. But I'm begging him, just go deep, right? You know, just to, uh, on this a play. Is at to the end, this is at the end of the game now you're talking no, about? Just in the first half. First I didn't half. think I, – I, I actually told my backup, Kurt Sohn, right. who I have nothing but respect for. Yeah, he was a good player, Kurt Sohn. He was. Because he's not even using Why should I even play – I might as well rest my groin. And so I'm begging him to call this play. He's all flustered and with Walton, Kenny. You're talking about Walton now, right? Walton, 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 right, yeah. Right, right. So he calls a deep play. And unfortunately, they were in the right coverage. But Kenny was able to – it was one of these coverages. We call it cover six back where you have the corner rolled up and safety's deep. But I was able to get through a hole. And Kenny stuck it in there. I broke a tackle and went in for my second touchdown. We go in and have – and then that it was just that back and forth, and I'll never forget. I uh, Kenny, I caught this little hook route, and I didn't think I had possession of it. They called it a fumble. They get it back, and Miami goes to score. And I'm thinking I lost the game, and very depressed. And then we we come back, and, you know, when we get to that whole uh, last game where we're coming down to, uh, you know, there's no time, and right. I will get the sequence of plays with Johnny Hecker, this hook and out with Mickey Schuler. And this play to Mickey Shooter to get out of bounds to, with no time to just break these tackles to get out. It was like so unbelievable to me at the time. And it was just an effort. And I was on the sidelines at the time. And there was this play that we always worked in, you know, in the uh, red zone, you know, inside the 20. And I, I know they're going to call this play. I'm not in. Kurt Stone's in. Kenny O'Brien runs out to the sideline to Joe Walt. Wesley, get in. And I'm like, okay, you know, I'm like, I'm, right, right, I'm right, hiring right. for that. You know, that's what, you know, he was just like that. And I don't even know. Again, with five seconds left, and as we're going through this progression of the play, there's no time. If you watch the whole sequence of the play, there's no time left. 
again, my um, Miami's in the right coverage in the zone where we we want this man on man, and Kenny just had the confidence to really stick it in there. And me, I'm over the middle between, and everybody says you can't catch the ball over the middle. Yo, you were, yeah, you were like three guys there. Yeah, absolutely. Nobody, I don't care what receiver. Nobody likes going over because you really paranoid with – I don't care if it's Kenny O'Brien, Richard Todd. I used to be so paranoid over the middle with Richard Todd if he's going to hang you up or whatever. But absolutely. I remember the ball just Hot stuck in my – it just stuck. And I, I, I say on this commentary about the game, it was like I was in a dream world. It just stuck in between these players. I couldn't even believe it my, myself and – I, I God, I I remember um, I was urinating blood after that game. I, I right, really because I got hit by my own player, you know. After wow. the game. So you know, I catch the touchdown. I'm like, I can't believe this just happened. And this is a game that I wanted to quit, where I didn't even want it. And I use this as a motivational tool for kids because I almost gave up, Joe, and because I was so angry at Joe Walker. Right. He wasn't right. with me. I'm so well rested. I was just angry because right. I never got the opportunity. Joe Walton was a terrible coach, by the and way. Then but anyway, we, yes. You no, know, and we we talked about this. That was a fumble when they go to kick it off in overtime. Oh yeah, that, Miami. You, know, you clearly they, clearly gave fumbled. it to them. They, they should have gave it. To, they yeah. gave it back to us. Yeah, and we call this one play action play that we'd worked on, and the rest is history. I catch my fourth touchdown. But one of the things I wish I would have reveled in it. I was very modest. I didn't show, show off. I never, if you look at me at touchdowns, very rarely did I slam the ball down. I no, just, you handed the ball to the official. Yeah, I ran in the locker room right after, and I wish I would have came back to hug Kenny O'Brien. I remember they asked me after the game who should be the MVP, and I, Kenny O'Brien should be the MVP, and I got the MVP of the game. But I just remember, why didn't I come celebrate with the fans and Kenny O'Brien just to really revel in? Because those things don't happen too often. And yes. I really yep. regret that. You know, that was the time. And I remember Marty Lyon picked me up in the end zone. And he actually fell back or tripping when we go in the end zone. I do but remember I, that. Yeah. He, yep. But that's just the personality that was never – because I remember uh, my ex-wife saying he'll come out and say – uh, it wasn't a great game, but he'll remember the one he dropped. And that's exactly what I said, you know, because uh, there was never a game that was perfect. I always remember the game or the, the, the ball that I didn't have or could have put me over 200 yards. And, I look, you know, you're always not a, being a perfectionist, but you could always do better. And that's what athletes do. But I'm very blessed and even, you know, I can say I've had my share of uh, disappointments with the Jets, but. I've been blessed that I was able to play 13 years and I'd have, I wouldn't change it for the world. Well, you know, I, I got to go back again. We're talking to Wesley. Well, and I really appreciate the time. You know, you and I, we could go on all day. You yeah. know, we, yeah. we could talk like this for 20 hours, yeah. but, yeah. but I got it one more thing. And I got to I got to throw this in there. Cause I know the jet fans are going to want me to, to ask about this. You got to talk about the championship game. You lost in Miami. You guys, you guys win. You, you go into Cincinnati, and they were the defending AFC champions. They've been to the Super Bowl the year before. You yep. kill them. You beat them 44 yep. 13, whatever it was. You blew them out. Freeman had a great day. I had Green. a great day. Yep. We yep. were on a roll. We were on a roll, you know? And then you go to LA to play the Raiders, yep. 93,000 there. You yep. caught the big pass in that game to set up the go ahead touchdown. You caught that bomb down to about the four yard line from Richard. Yep. And Scott yep. Durkin ran it in for the touchdown. You win yep. that game 17-14. Unbel- Lance Mel had two big interceptions late. One of the great wins in the history of the franchise. You stick it to the Raiders. Al Davis, the whole thing. Remember Chris Ward and Lyle Alzado? Yeah. Walt great. Michaels at halftime thinking Al Davis was calling him or whatever was right. going on. Right? You remember all of that? Yeah. So now you go to Miami. I remember Miami had beat you twice in a row during the year. They, you you lost twice to them during the season. I couldn't and, of course, that out. was the strike year, too. But anyway, you go into Miami, and now it rained for five days in a row in Miami, and Don Shula doesn't have a top on the field at the Orange Bowl? Wesley, Very what is that? Smart. Very smart. And you know what? For some reason, I don't even know. I didn't even think about it raining. And I normally get up in the morning, and just because I'm, I'm a receiver, right, you want right. to love playing in warm weather in Miami. And I remember waking up, open up the curtain, and it's like a monsoon. And right. I'm like, that's going to ruin our day. It's going to change the whole game plan. And I remember I caught one pass towards the end of the game, a little stop route. It was ridiculous. And 
and we still could have uh, it was in that in that type of game with the weather being the way that it was with the field it could be a game of turnovers and i think woody bennett who we had yep. uh that's and he was traded to uh, miami and he fumbled a ball in their uh in their territory and we recovered but they gave it back to him and i'm like that's just the way the ball bounces richard todd had one of his worst games no, we it didn't, was his worst. It wasn't one of it was we the, didn't run the ball <laughs> run or pass, and that was a nightmare. And 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 when you think about that, and I tell people all the time, it's so hard to get to the Super Bowl. Here we're one game for the Super Bowl, and the, all the success we used to have with Miami, and you know, I don't know. And Buttle probably could tell you a whole story with the, the turf because I don't know if it was uh, done purposely, but oh, if it definitely. was, if definitely. I was the coach. I would have done it there to stop us because, hey, we could run, we could pass. We just yeah. had a lot of special weapons, but you have to be able to play under any circumstances. That day we didn't, but weather certainly presents a problem for us, and that would work in Miami's favor. And like I said, if I'd have been Don Schuler and as a coach, I'd have let it rain and be muddy too just to try to stop us. But it was just one of the big disappointments of my career. You mentioned Cleveland. That was a big disappointment. Oh, God. You caught a big touchdown pass in that game, too. You, know? one. you caught a touchdown one. pass in the Cleveland game, too, from Pat Ryan on a, on a yep. uh, flea flicker. Yeah, that's why I said I don't care. Just throw me the ball. I don't care who's back there. Right, you know? right. But, hey, this is just life, and I'll, I'm still going to be a Jet fan for life. I have three of my children. My daughter's moving from Miami back to New Jersey. I have a, a daughter, a younger son who's getting ready to have a baby. They're in Upper Saddle River. Right by and, me. Right down yeah. the street from me. Well, pretty much. I'm saying you keep those those uh, different advertisements going because I'll have to make a trip out there to, 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 to be with some of your fans and some of your people and some of your sponsors. I'll be there, you know, because I got my oldest is in New Jersey, too. And, you know, I have three kids and hopefully during the football season, I'll be out there because I still do these appearances and whatnot, too. So my wife and I are hoping to get out there because, hey, I'm working on my eighth grandchild, you know, so wow. I'm expecting one very soon, any day now. God so bless. I should That's... be out soon. Well, you know what? You come out here. We'll have to when you come out back to Jersey here. We'll have to get together, bro. We definitely oh. we're going to have to do that, you know? Well, yeah, because I got a friend in Rockland County that was just out here, too. He says the same thing, so that would be a definite. That would be a bet. Wesley, it was great having you on. I, I really appreciate it. Like I said, we could go on. We could do this all day. You and I will never stop. So, I mean, I, you know, I got to give you a little break here. You know what I mean? Got to give you a little break. And uh, Wesley Walker. I work that the, uh, the TV portion or the filming or whatever, right. the electronic part of this whole thing, you know? It's well, never easy. did. Somehow we yeah. got it. Somehow, Wes, we, the two old guys, me and you, we somehow, well, really, yeah. the women got it done. It wasn't me and you. The ladies got it done. Right, Wes? Yeah, there you go. And I can't blame it on my blindness. You know what I mean? So, hey, <laughs> whatever works, whatever whatever it takes, get it done. So I look forward to seeing you, and I really appreciate you having me. And tell Terry, I really appreciate all her help, and that she's, she's wonderful, and all the work she was trying to do to put this thing together. So I appreciate it. Well, your wife too, Tella. Thank you very much for everything. And well, she, now that's I want to. What's that? She, you were talking to her. Barbara sets my schedule. I have to check with her when I can do these darn things with our schedule. I now understand. I have, I've been trying to delay this because now I got to go on a five mile hike, is what I'm dreading, you know? Well, I wouldn't mind being on that five mile hike with you yeah. in Arizona. I can tell you that instead of being here in Jersey where it's snowing and raining again. You well, know? So I'm I've, sorry, buddy. I'm in 70, 80 degree in shorts. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. And, and I'll, I'll be honest, since I've been here uh, with my body, the way I feel with the warmer weather, it has definitely helped me. I don't have certain symptoms I was I'm getting sure. in weather, you know. I'm sure. Can, but I look again, for Wesley, I want to thank you again. I really do. You're the best. I want to thank, let me also thank Kenny Zor for setting this up. KZ yep, that's Marketing my man. did that's a great my job. Man. Yep. Yep. Okay. Well, we'll talk. I'll be I'll be giving you a call every now and then. We'll have to we'll have to BS, yeah. you know. I'm open 24-7. So glad to do it. Okay. Wesley, God yeah. bless. Thank Enjoy you so much, life. bro. All right. Thank you. All right. All Take right. Take care, bro. baby. Be good. The great Wesley Walker. Thank you so much. You got it. The great Wesley Walker, Joe Beningo with the Yoda Payne podcast. And uh we'll talk to you with our next uh, podcast coming up on Friday. Thank you so much. Take care, Wes. All right. 
Thank you. You got it. See you, bro.